This week's Parsha for Shabbat is Parsha Yitro. It has great importance. First of all, it's January 18th, so it's my wife's birthday, so we wish her a Yom Huled Sameach, a happy birthday, and we celebrate many more together. Two days ago was our anniversary, so that was another big day. And now we turn to Parsha Yitro. Yitro has in it the Ten Commandments. So what bigger Parsha could you have than the Ten Commandments? Every bar and bat mitzvah would love to have Parsha Yitro because they get to talk about the Ten Commandments, they get to read it, the drama, everyone who stands in the synagogue as if we were standing at Mount Sinai. But think about this irony for a second. I just said the name of the Parsha is Yitro and it contains the Ten Commandments. Yitro, in English we call him Jethro. So who was Yitro? Yitro was a a Midianite priest. He was the father-in-law of Moses. When Moses fled Egypt, he went to Midian. There he was given safety, and he ended up marrying Sipora, the daughter of Yitro, Kohen Midian, the high priest of Midian. In other words, the leader of the Midianite people. Now, the Midianites are not Hebrews. The Midianites are not Jewish, in a sense. In other words, they're not part of our tribe. They're a different religion. They have their different beliefs. They're a different culture. So how is it the rabbis organize it in such a way that the name of the Parsha that has the Ten Commandments in it has a name, is named after a Midianite priest? And I think they had a very clear message here. First of all, the Ten Commandments were not just given to the Jewish people. The Ten Commandments were given to the Jewish people in order to bring them to the world. That was our task. It wasn't to take the Ten Commandments and create only our culture and society around it. It was to teach them to the world, which we've been doing for thousands of years. There's another lesson, and that is Jethro, Yitro. When he brought Moses, Moses' wife, in other words, Jethro's daughter, and the two children, after Moses had finally brought the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he brings the wife and two daughters to Moses. Because Moses is extremely busy and Jethro's respectful says, I'll bring you your wife and two daughters who have been with me seeking refuge while you were in Egypt. It was to protect them because it was dangerous for Zipporah and the children to be in Egypt. Pharaoh could have taken out his anger at Moses on his wife and children. So now Jethro brings them. He looks and he sees that Moses is extremely busy. He works from morning to dusk, from the, till the end of the day being a judge to the people, adjudicating cases. And he's exhausted. He can't accomplish his goals. He can't even serve all the people. And Jethro says, I don't think the system is working very well, Moses. I have a suggestion. You need to appoint judges underneath you and set up a whole system where they hear the cases and the difficult ones or the ones they can't decide, they'll bring to you. Kind of like a Supreme Court, Court of Appeals, and then the regular court. Moses says, excellent idea. He adopts the court system from Jethro. So what is the Torah trying to tell us? Wisdom does not reside only in the Jewish people. Wisdom doesn't reside only in any one nation. Wisdom resides in humanity. And from every culture, from every society, there is a piece of wisdom that can help us grow, that can improve our society. And the Torah wanted to say, even though at this moment we're giving you the Ten Commandments, God says, I'm giving you the Ten Commandments. We're entering into a covenant. Don't think that excludes other nations. You have to teach them as well. And don't think it makes you so special and so above other people that you have nothing to learn from them. No, even your court system, that which will carry out the Ten Commandments, that which will enforce them, that which will guide you in fulfilling those commandments, that idea came from a source outside the Jewish people. Moses was extremely respectful of his father-in-law. He respected him not only because of his status, but because of his wisdom and because of his kindness to Moses. So in the portion that we become the people of Israel in covenant with God and receive the Ten Commandments, the Torah teaches us to learn wisdom and accept it from all nations and to understand that we were given the Ten Commandments in order to interact with other nations and to help share that wisdom with them and to learn wisdom from them. So it's a universal message, Parsha Yitro. Yes, we have a special relationship with God because we accepted the Ten Commandments, we accepted the covenant and the responsibility to teach it to others. 
but at the same time we didn't close ourselves off. There is so much we can learn from others. Together we strengthen each other and we enrich each other. This mutual relationship between Jewish people and the nations is what we experience in this Parsha in which God enters into a covenant with Israel and gives us the Ten Commandments. An incredible universal message but at the same time preserving the very special nature of the relationship between God and the people of Israel. Shabbat Shalom.